How's it going, guys? It is 4.08 a.m. Monday, July 11th here in Japan, and we have a medium difficulty question for hematology. Uh, I'll tell you exactly what you need to know and not waste our time. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, and man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. 49-year-old man. He has longstanding type 2 diabetes mellitus, and he's had epistaxis the past two weeks. That's nose bleeding. Laboratory studies show hemoglobin low at 8.0 grams per deciliter should be 13 to 17.5 in males and non-menstruating women, 12 to 17.5 in menstruating women. Platelets are normal, 180,000 per microliter should be 150 to 450,000 per microliter. Bleeding time is elevated at 11 minutes, should be two to seven minutes. Prothrombin time normal at 12 seconds should be 10 to 15 seconds. Partial thromboplastin time normal at 36 seconds should be 25 to 40 seconds. Blood urea nitrogen, super fucking elevated at 90 milligrams per deciliter, should be under 20. Question wants to know the most likely explanation for the epistaxis. So we should point out that when we have a bleeding time uh, issue, that refers to a platelet problem. If we have PT and or PTT that are elevated, that refers to a clotting factor problem. So the combination, or I should just say, the fact that we have only bleeding time elevated in this case means we have nothing wrong with our clotting factors, only a platelet issue. And you can see that platelet count is normal. Sure, it's at the lower end of normal. We said 150 to 450,000 per microliter, but it's still normal. And we say, well, why do we have low hemoglobin then? It's probably a combination of the fact that there's literally been epistaxis, so we could make a case for iron deficiency anemia. We don't have those values here, but also anemia of chronic disease, we clearly have renal failure. Okay, diabetes mellitus one and two, most common cause of chronic renal failure. So let's just whip through the answer choices here. We'll go backwards. Choice E, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, TTP, wrong fucking answer. This is going to, it's a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. It's going to present as uh, hemolytic anemia with schistocytosis, thrombocytopenia, renal insufficiency, sometimes with hematuria, fever, and neurologic abnormalities. Uh, Antibodies against or deficiency of Adam TS13, a matrix metalloproteinase that breaks down von Willebrand factor multimers. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, immune thrombocytopenic purpura, aka idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, ITP, wrong answer. Uh, although bleeding time is elevated, we would certainly have thrombocytopenia, low platelets, which we don't have here. Almost always going to be a school aged kid who's had a viral infection that has epistaxis or uh, mild cutaneous findings, uh, petechiae, ecchymoses. It can be a woman 30s to 40s with just random bruising where she has elevated bleeding time, low platelets. Uh, family medicine likes that, not to get too tangential because if you have a woman 30s to 40s with random bruising and her bleeding time and platelets are normal, that's domestic abuse, not ITP. And this is going to be uh, antibodies against glycoproteins 2B, 3A on platelets for platelet aggregation. We give steroids followed by IVIG, followed by splenectomy to treat. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, erythropoietin efficiency. Wrong answer. Albeit, this is important for the mechanism of anemia of chronic disease and renal failure. Even though we have renal failure, and even though we have low hemoglobin, which, as I just said before, we could conjecture is simply due to iron deficiency anemia because of the ongoing epistaxis. Even if we were to conjecture that this is uh, EPO deficiency and renal failure causing anemia of chronic disease, we wouldn't have an elevated bleeding time in anemia of chronic disease, okay? We would simply have a low hemoglobin. So we know that there has to be more than just anemia of chronic disease uh, type scenario here because of the elevated bleeding time. Therefore, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, excessive serum organic acid, wrong answer, just a distractor. Although blood urea nitrogen is elevated, urea is a weak base. It's not an organic acid, okay? Wrong fucking answer. Choice A, acquired platelet dysfunction is the correct answer. This is called uremic platelet dysfunction. I've made prior clips on this. If you've been following my content, the audio cubing for a while now, I've harped on this. Okay, students get this wrong all the time. You need to know that for whatever fucking reason, high blood urea nitrogen causes a qualitative, not a quantitative, a qualitative dysfunction of platelets. So you're going to have a normal platelet count with a high bleeding time. Okay, this bemuses students. Okay, it's just uremic platelet dysfunction. US Assembly can write it as acquired platelet dysfunction. So, this patient's going to need hemodialysis in order to decrease the propensity for bleeding, improve the platelet function. Also, for surge forms for 2CK, 
Uh, patients who have uremia, okay, renal failure, if they're going to have surgery, they need hemodialysis because uh, they'll have excessive bleeding due to uremic platelet dysfunction, as well as just their electrolyte imbalance that needs uh, management. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.